Hello folks, welcome to Quaff TV, I'm Justin, this is Andre. Hello. And today we thought we'd taste some bubbles, and the bubbles are from Andre. Brown Brothers. Really interesting brand, been around forever, right? Yeah, are they your right. first family of wine? Yes, they are. they are. So, legendary formative company in Australian wine history, I think since the late 19th century, so they've been around yes. forever. Fourth or fifth generation they're up to yes. now. The lovely, Did you do some research? The lovely Catherine. Yeah, Catherine is lovely. It's more impressive that I haven't looked at my notes yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're quite a hottie, Catherine, too. Um, but look, uh, the future of Brown Brothers looks in equally good hands as it has been. But they're famous for their sweet, fruity wines, aren't they, traditionally? Yeah, and they've got a, they've got a really large range, so it kind of covers the whole gamut of wine styles. But yeah, I, I probably ran into them the first time in that fashion when I was younger. Like Fruity Lexia yeah. and the Tarango Red. Yeah. You introduced me to Tarango Red, actually. A little bit of spritz, put it in the fridge. Yep. Do you remember that? And then, yeah, yeah, I was about 18, I think. Dolcino <laughs> and Syrah. So I think the fantastic thing about Brown Brothers is that, you know, the expression, um, talk dry, drink sweet. Yes. And everyone goes, oh, I need like dry wines. But when they're at cellar door and they actually taste them, a lot of people go, oh, I quite like that sweet one. I think Brown Brothers have been, you know, one of the few companies to actually get smart and go, do you know what? If 90% of the wine population enjoys some sweet wines, then we're going to make some nice sweet wines. And they've done it, and they've absolutely killed it, and the rest is history. But, but, we are here to talking taste about the sweets. We're talking about the sparklings, and the first one up is Prosecco, 2011 vintage from the King Valley. Limited release, uh, they've done. Um, this I think, is not, oh, this is a limited release. Is it the two? Yeah, it is, oh, the cool. 2011. And they only do, um, Small quantities, and I think uh, you know a few wine stores, and mostly sell a door. Prosecco, really interesting. You're seeing it more and more everywhere. A lot more. Uh, I think you noticed it in the last yeah. couple of years. It's just taken off in Australia. Because it's, it's cheap. Yeah. I mean, even as an import, it's cheap and it's fruity and it's got a little kick of sweetness usually. Or even if it's really dry, it's so clean. Yeah, isn't it? it's yeah, it's it's great, easy drinking, and it's yeah, it's approachable pricing. I don't know. Is that right? Northern Italian, Piemonte, yes. Piemonte or something. Is yes, I've got no idea. Yeah, Italian sparkling. Um, what was the? I did no research on this wine because I didn't think I didn't think we were doing it limited. So, Andre, what's the price point? Yeah, no, there's uh, <laughs> absolutely no idea what this is worth. But I would suggest it couldn't be more than 20, 25 bucks. I may have just undersold them by ten or fifteen, but I don't think I have because you don't often see for second. I don't know when it says I limited mean, release. I'm a little bit worried that you have <laughs> undersold it. I, don't, I think they're just tricking everyone into thinking they should get some quick smart before it runs out. Yeah, I think that just means they didn't make much. But. Um, right. It's not, look, it's a nice bottle and um, yeah, Prosecco, I think is the sparkling of the future for Australia. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 I really like it. It was just, uh, I was thinking well, about the wine and you said wine for the future. I don't know. Anyway. It's really peachy on the nose, I get. Yeah. Can well, I talk us through it, Justin. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. Well, I, um, I get lots of kind of apple and citrusy stuff going on for me. So, um, it smells clean, fresh, kind of apple, citrusy kind of stuff going it's on. It's creamy, isn't it? Like bright and zesty, but really creamy, yeah. I reckon. That's actually one of the... That's a really nice Prosecco. Really Granny Smith apples. Yeah, really, Absolutely. and it's right through the bar. It's actually, it's lovely. It's light, Fresh, it's clean, it's easy. pure. It's, it's not like super, super um, bubbly, but it's got a really nice creamy mousse. It's actually delicious. It's actually delicious. That's the first time I've ever tried this. It's yeah, same. No, no, that's my, the best thing about it, and I like good, all good proseccos. And I prefer, I'll, I don't know, I don't mind a bit of sweetness on them. This one hasn't got a lot of sweetness, has no, it? No, it's there to make it round, like to round it out. It's so friendly. zesty and fresh yeah. and clean and bright. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Yeah, it is stunning. So if you haven't got into prosecco, give it a crack because it's um, they all. Everyone talks about it as being a great aperitif, as in have a glass before dinner. But um, I think it's just a great little sparkly. It is a great little sparking, and it's somewhere in between the range of like 20 and 35 dollars. Oh, 15 and 40 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> next, right. next ah, is, yeah. is a absolute, I've had this before, it's absolutely stunning. It's Brown Brothers Pinot Noir Chardonnay and Method Traditional, and it... The Pinot Mignon in there too? Yes, there is. Uh, it retails, Andre, for... Yeah, oh, look, I've seen it anywhere from sort of 16, Sorry, 18 bucks to 25 yeah. bucks, but this was drawn to my attention by... The incorrigible Nick Stop actually, when he sort of voted it the best value shardy, uh, best value sparkling. Hey! Shit, and it's got a bit of a pop! <laughs> I think we should put a hole in the roof. Yeah, uh, okay. 
yeah. <laughs> he, um, he rated the best value sparkling in the country, and I've uh, so did Peter Forrestal, I believe, and a bunch of other people, and so it became my go-to shardy. It was that and, and Jan's, and um, it's King Valley, so is the Prosecco, by the way. Um, Brown Brothers started in Malawa, Victoria, but um, have, um, yeah, they really sort of own King Valley, I reckon. Um, complexity goes up an incredible amount on the nose on this one. Yeah, yeah. Well, this oh, this is this is really really good traditional method sparkling. Yeah, yeah. it's a, and it's astonishing that it's a, twenty bucks or whatever. Smells delicious. Um, that is an amazing nose for nutty, that price it? point. It's yeah, like yeah. creamy, nutty, like it's yum. Yeah, good yeast, good sort of cashew nut yeast, and really bready. Great flavour in the mouth. It's it's got great length. It's like zippy in the. It's it's a really nice oh, sparkling. That's, that's absolutely delicious. You couldn't ask for more from the non-vintage. Certainly not at that price point. No. It's got real zippy lime. Yep. So all of that sort of really tight zippy lime and green apple again. I get and sort of almost like not quite right neck sort of kicking in there. But beautiful nutty creamy. Um, those layers, those yeah. complexity biscuits. Little, um, you can't. You know, arrowroot gonna, biscuits. You're going to. Uh, it's going to be hard to find a wine better than that for that price. You know, that's that's great. Yeah, no, well, genuinely, Brown Brothers. Genuinely, one of the best value sparklers. So there you go. A couple of crackers to try over summer if you've not tried them, or go and get a look at them. Either it can one after another is the way to do those two. Indeed, and uh, Andre says hello, Catherine Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in uh, Melbourne. Um, <laughs> all right, no, um, good. So there you go, Brown Brothers. What an astonishing um, company. A couple yep. of great little sparklings that we love. Thank you very much for your time. See you soon.